Hey, welcome back to the 40 Finance Channel. Today I'm talking about a stock that I own, DraftKings. And this is not a stock for the faint of heart here, uh, particularly in this current environment that we are in. As you probably know, DraftKings is not a profitable stock right now. There's no EPS uh, for DraftKings, and there probably will not be until maybe 2023 at the end. Maybe they'll get a positive quarter in there, uh, perhaps 2024 will be the first uh, fiscal year with a positive EPS. The opportunity here uh, for sports gaming and iGaming in general as legalization rolls out in the United States, uh, this is a bet on user acquisition. This is a bet on revenue growth. This is a bet on average revenue per user growth. And it's almost a scientific experiment And can you build a brand uh, from zero to immensely recognizable uh, in a short period of time. Now, if you watch my channel, you know that I bought into DraftKings because I love to play the daily fantasy. I live in Ohio, so they do not have the sportsbook component up yet. However, that could be coming down the line here very soon. And in general, my experience on the platform has been great. I think it's easy to use. I use the app. Uh, and Indiana, which is a state uh, next to me, uh, actually has the legalized sports book. So every blue moon when I'm over in Indiana, I'll do a little 5 or $10 bet on the platform, and I've been able to investigate it in that way. And it works just as well as the daily fantasy for as far as I'm concerned. Now, for today's video, we're just going to do a quick look at where does DraftKings stand now and what is really the outlook for 2022 and heading into 2023. All right, jumping into Seeking Alpha here to look at the stock today, uh, $21.51. The one-year view is minus $63. The high was about $71, something like that. My cost basis is in the neighborhood of $33. So I'm not down quite this bad, uh, but I'm still bleeding out a little bit uh, in the 30 plus percentile uh, on the losing end. Now, with DraftKings, we know that this is a seasonal company, uh, right? We're just coming off of the Super Bowl. Uh, football is far and away in America, uh, the largest betting sport in terms of sports book. Now, on the bright side, from a comp standpoint, we are going to have a normal uh, NBA spring, NHL spring, and then the NCAA tournament. So a lot of those things were up and down last year uh, with COVID cancellations and whatnot. Uh, so that's the good news on the spring front. We will also get the report of the Super Bowl and how well DraftKings did as an individual company. We'll probably get that in late April, early May on their next earnings report. Now, in terms of uncertainty, uh, there is a strike or proposed strike out there in Major League Baseball. Have to monitor it. There's still a ways to go before they start their season. That could be a negative for any sports gambling company. Uh, on the bright side, uh, baseball is not the regular season baseball anyway is not one of the big markets for sports gambling in the United States. If I had to guess, it'll probably just lead to more people jumping in on NBA playoffs, golf, all the things that uh, are going on next to baseball traditionally. All right, on the valuation side, the only thing that matters here is growth. Uh, that's really the only calling card that this stock has. And you can see revenue growth year over year, 110%. Revenue growth forward, looking at about 62% right now. You compare that to the sector median, and obviously DraftKings is blowing away uh, the sector median. Now, that being said, DraftKings also is missing a lot of things uh, that the sector does offer, such as uh, EBITDA growth, EPS, free cash flow, uh, a lot of the stuff uh, that a value investor would look for, they're not going to find that in DraftKings, okay? So it's almost a bet in and of itself. All right, let's take a look at earnings estimates. But before that, I wanna call out this platform I'm using, Seeking Alpha. My affiliate link is in the description, gets you a significant discount on a one-year subscription to Seeking Alpha. And if you like stock data and getting a multitude of different opinions on a single stock, uh, this is definitely a phenomenal platform and I encourage you to check it out. Save some money while supporting my channel uh, by using my affiliate link below. You can see we've got uh, negatives 
on the EPS side all the way as far as the eye can see. Now this, I'm not sure when this was updated, but I can tell you in the most recent earnings report, DraftKings was at least speculating a potential uh, EPS positive quarter in 2023. And I'd imagine that that would be the kickoff of the football season. Uh, so that led me to speculate that perhaps 2024 will be the next uh, opportunity for a positive uh, EPS year. We'll see how that plays out, uh, but they are making progress, albeit on a, on a small scale, of getting towards profitability. You know, this year kind of flat. We'll see how that actually shakes out. 42% uh, in the right direction in 2023, but make no bones about it. Uh, there's not uh, any EPS here to worry about for a long time. All right, let's look at the revenue side. Uh, December of 2022. Right now, the estimates sit at plus 52% over 27 analysts. You can see the range here. Um, I'm in the camp that they will get to the $2 billion mark. We'll see if that happens. Uh, but even at 198, and you see here the forward price sales of 451. I mean, not terrible. Uh, I haven't looked across all of the gambling providers, but that's at least in, in a more reasonable stratosphere than some tech stocks. And then looking ahead, plus 32% on the growth line and plus 27% uh, through 2024. All right, the big thing to keep your eye on for DraftKings is, of course, new states. And I'm here on Legal Sports Report. This is a great website. It's a free website that you can read a lot about how states are tracking. And at least in their world, uh, their opinion, these states in particular are close to having legal sports betting. This is 2022. They're saying Maryland, Nebraska, and Ohio. Uh, anticipated launch in Ohio is January 2023. The governor actually came out and said that. Uh, Ohioans like myself are hoping that uh, they move a little faster but that's probably asking a lot out of the government. You see the final paragraph, all could have some sort of legal wagering by the end of 2022, if not 23. In addition, California plans to put retail sports betting on the 22 ballot as per a tribal gaming initiative. The one big call out though that's not yet uh, been represented in earnings reports is New York for DraftKings and, and other online players. New York went live uh, in early January. I think it was January 8th, but I can't remember for sure. That was prior to the Super Bowl, obviously. So nothing in your earnings reports will represent uh, New York yet. Uh, we'll start to see those filter in when we get the Q1 results, like I said, late April, early May. Okay, beyond the states that we just talked about, the other thing I want to call out if you're kicking around this stock is the prominence of what they're calling iGaming. Okay, so this is basically live uh, blackjack, uh, roulette, whatever that you play right on the app. Okay, so you do not go to a physical casino. And iGaming uh, really has the potential to, to potentially even dwarf out a uh, sportsbook, right? Because you got to figure the demographic for sportsbook has a sort of a limit to it on who would be interested in that. Uh, whereas somebody who sits in their uh, couch and plays freaking roulette, I mean, I suppose that uh, has a broader reach. Uh, it certainly would appear to. So with DraftKings, they are fully integrated uh, with an iGaming system. They also, uh, if you remember, bought the Golden Nugget, which had some iGaming technology to it as well. Uh, but here's the big call out, right? This is the point that I'm getting to. You're live, iGaming is live in 11% of the US population. Uh, Sportsbook is live in 36% of the population. So obviously Sportsbook, 36%, that's decent. I don't know if we'll ever get to 100% because there's always gonna be some state, uh, you know, maybe it's Nevada, I don't know, that's just gonna get super territorial. So let's just pretend that 75% of the states is reasonable. Right, so you've basically got double of the US sports population under that math. And then you have about 64, 
on the iGaming side. So there's still a lot to go here for DraftKings in terms of things just turning on, right? Uh, take away the brand building and customer acquisition costs and those things. Uh, markets turning on is a fairly exciting place to be uh, for a stock. And right now in the states that I've been watching, you basically have three players. So FanDuel slash Flutter, which is a stock that's on the OTC markets. Uh, they've got some significant wins as number one market share in several states. DraftKings is right there with them. And then Caesars is kind of coming up through the bottom. But those are your three players and all three are playing to win. They're paying out now, right? They're spending a crap ton of money today uh, with hopes that they will wrangle in uh, the real estate and the users to be profitable in the out years. Okay, so to be clear, I own DraftKings stock. I want it to do well. I think it has a catalyst to do well uh, over the next few years. I don't think that this is a 60, 90, 120 day stock, but if you're holding for long, you're gonna be buying the big dips like we see here now uh, at 20 bucks or so, or maybe it goes under. Uh, I'll probably add a little bit over time. I don't think there's like a huge hurry uh, to drop everything you're doing and buy a thousand shares of DraftKings. I think you can pepper it in uh, throughout the next three to four months. And the game from there is competition. Can DraftKings execute? Uh, they look like they have a winning plan, okay? They, they've already turned New Jersey profitable. Uh, they, they are breaking up their market segments and sharing the profitability metrics. So it's not flying blind like many people think. But to be fair, it is still a little bit of a gamble on a market that is uh, relatively unproven. Now, I've watched sports my whole life. I've played fantasy football for 100,000 years, it feels like. Uh, so I feel good about where it's going. And I think the big caveat that is not as sexy as the sports book, but it's the iGaming, uh, to me, that comes in, it has a strong potential to come in and eventually push this company over uh, in the profitability scores. All right, guys, so that's an update here on DraftKings stock. Again, this is one I own. I'm rooting for it. Let me know if you have any interest in DraftKings stock below. What do you, where do you think this one goes this year? Love to read your comments. Don't forget to check out that special offer for Seeking Alpha uh, down in the description there. Save yourself some money, support the channel. I certainly appreciate it. And of course, please give the video a like, share with your friends, all the things. We'll see you on the next video.